Hi, I'm Matt and welcome back to Soil Lab. Recently we've been getting a lot of requests for alfalfa meal and so we thought we'd go ahead and do a quick research study for you. We love when you guys comment and let us know what you want to learn more about. So if there's another fertilizer amendment you want to learn more about, throw it in the comments below and if we get enough traction we'll get that study going for you as well. So alfalfa meal is a plant-based fertilizer. It's a 2.5% nitrogen, 0.5% phosphate, and 2.5% potassium. What we did is followed the labeled instructions and we went to the high rate. Um, we did alfalfa meal at 10 pounds per 100 square feet. Now, if you're thinking in terms of how much is that for my standard four foot by eight foot raised bed, that'd be just over three pounds of, of alfalfa meal in that raised bed. So we added that high rate of alfalfa meal, 10 pounds per 100 square feet, we incorporated it, we kept that soil field moist, and then we sampled. And so we sampled to imitate what it would look like two weeks after planting your garden if you were to incorporate it at the time of planting. So let's go ahead and dive into the data. So after that two week period, we looked at the data and we actually found some really interesting results. You know, in short, alfalfa meal works. The first thing we're gonna notice is that we did see a slight increase in nitrogen. Now, the total nitrogen that's available in the soil increased, but interestingly, that nitrate dropped and the ammonium increased. So you have to ask yourself why that is. Well, my best guess is that those so soil microorganisms were consuming that nitrate to break down this carbon-based alfalfa meal. And as they were breaking down that carbon-based alfalfa meal, it was yielding ammonium. So we saw that drop in nitrate, and then that increase in ammonium. If we were to stretch this out a couple more weeks, we'd likely see those nitrate levels coming right back up. Now, I mentioned that alfalfa meal is 0.5% phosphorus. What did we see in terms of um, phosphorus? Well, we saw no real significant difference. You can see those bars are slightly off, but with all of our replications, um, that's functionally the same. Now, we put phosphorus out, but didn't see an increase. Why is that? Well, there's um, the likelihood that it just was a very small amount of phosphate that went out, or we did see a pretty sharp increase in calcium. And sometimes at application, that calcium can bind with that phosphate, making it momentarily unavailable. Um, so that could have been an explanation as well. I guess the real takeaway on phosphorus is that there was no significant change two weeks after incorporation we saw a huge increase in potassium. Now, we know that there's the same amount of potassium and nitrogen in our alfalfa meal that we applied, so why did we see so much more potassium become available in the, that two-week period? Well, potassium never combines into an organic component in a plant, so when we put that alfalfa meal out and watered it, it leached the potassium right out of that alfalfa meal. But interestingly, because of the chemistry of potassium, it won't likely leak, leach out of our soil. It's gonna stick around. So for our big three NPK, we saw an increase in nitrogen, no change in phosphorus, and a great increase in potassium. So this is a great balanced fertilizer to get our garden started. In terms of the other nutrients, we also didn't see much of a change in sulfur, um, which is not, not surprising, but we did see increases in many of our other nutrients. I'd mentioned calcium already. We also saw increases in magnesium, iron, and the micronutrient manganese. The rest of our micronutrients had pretty insignificant differences with either slight increases or decreases, and that's true across zinc, copper, and boron. Now on boron, it shows a decrease, but statistically that was the same, and the decrease that you're seeing here on the screen was only 0.1 part per million, so a sl very, very slight decrease. When we talk about our soil pH, the main takeaway here is it didn't change much. Um, now, we would see seasonal changes in pH and we would also see changes in pH based on the state of cycling of the nitrogen or ammonia more specifically in this product. So over time, you might see of ever so slight acidification just depending upon how resistant your soil is to pH change or how well buffered your soil is. So now let's just kind of wrap this up and talk takeaways. I think the first takeaway is you asked for it and we delivered. You were curious about alfalfa meal and we developed a study. So I'll encourage you again to drop some comments below and let us know what else you're interested in learning about. Another takeaway is we did this at the recommended rate. We went with the high label rate of alfalfa meal and definitely saw some differences. Some of the main differences that we should think about are the increases in nitrogen and potassium in particular. And as we look at that fertilizer label on the alfalfa meal, it had a one-to-one -one ratio of nitrogen and potassium. So that came to be expected. 
we got the value added benefit of increases in some other nutrients. Um, those other increases that we saw were calcium um, and magnesium quite notably, as well as those micronutrients, iron and manganese. The last takeaway was really in regards to pH, and that takeaway is that it didn't substantially change pH either up or down. So this didn't immediately acidify the soil or increase um, the pH either. So would I use alfalfa meal in my garden at planting? Absolutely. And what you could expect, it results very similar to ours. Thanks for your comments, thanks for watching, and I'll look forward to seeing you in the lab.